ever thought about how your family is like a ship? When I was a little girl, one of my favorite movies of all time was An American Tale. And it's a story of this refugee family who leave their land to come to the United States for safety and opportunity. And on their voyage, they get hit by this enormous storm. Now, thunder is booming and the wood is shaking and water is flowing through this unhatched door. And outside, the waves literally form into this large monster of a man who clenches his two fists and pummel the deck. And what I'd like to talk today about is how, right now, our families in crisis can very much feel like that ship sailing through the waters and the storm. Now, when we're in crisis, healthy family dynamics are what can keep us afloat. By healthy family dynamics, I mean all the ways that we interact with each other, that we treat each other in our families so that we can learn some important things. First, that we can learn how to love and how to be loved. That we can develop a sense of our God-given worth and how to use our free will. In healthy family dynamics, we learn how to build secure attachments and have that trust in relationships. Our families have healthy dynamics. We learn how to handle struggles in life. And we learn how to grow into who Christ has called us to be. Remember, during crisis, it's like a ship sailing through a storm. And so however we feel like our family is or is not doing well, here's an opportunity to move forward. And to that end, I am going to be sharing five tips that we can all try to embrace as we look to improve our family dynamics. So tip one, inspect your ship. We all know that there were things going wrong with our ship way before the storm and that there were real strengths in the ship way before the storm. We are not the storm. We can take this time as a family to name those things, name our strengths, name our struggles, and also look for the ways unexpectedly that our living ship is improving with God's help. So we can take that time to inspect our ship. And in that, you will probably notice some of your own stuff. So when we're inspecting our ship, we also need to own what is my stuff? What are my struggles? What are the things that I need to work on? Because one of the ways that we can improve our family is by working on our own challenges. We can't control others, but we can definitely work on ourselves. Tip number two is to give grace. Who is at their best during a storm? None of us are. And so as we inspect our ship, we can also say some of these things are really situational, but we don't need to make general sweeping statements on the state of our family in a time of crisis. We can inspect, we can figure out what needs to be handled, but we can also just treat each other with a level of patience and humor in a very difficult time. One way to help us be gracious with each other is to practice gratitude, to not take the good for granted. Maybe in that situation, you lost your temper, but maybe in the next situation, your family had a real spontaneous moment of fun. Celebrate that. We can take the time to be grateful for what is actually still working, still good in our families. We can also take that time as a family to be grateful to God. And with that is tip number three, and that is to turn to our Lord. Now, if we really want to learn what it means to have healthy relationships, what it means to be able to love someone sacrificially while also not losing yourself. Who is a better model than our Lord? And that's part of the good news is that in the midst of this storm, we're still called to be like children who trust in our heavenly father. Let's 
let's face it, before this crisis, before any crisis, we weren't really in control. And in this moment, we're being reminded that we don't have to embrace that with a sense of fear, though it can be scary, but we can learn to turn to God who really is in all places and filling all things. And whenever I get overwhelmed, I like to remind myself that I belong to the Lord who made heaven and earth, you know, just in case I needed to really know his resume. (laughs) God has a really great resume. (laughs) We can model this trust in God in our families by the way that we talk about struggles, by the way that we talk about plans, that we can embrace the God willing. And if God wills, that we can model to our families that yes, we try and we prepare, but we also know that things aren't in our control and that's okay. So we've inspected our ship. We're trying to give grace. We're turning to God, but really we're still worried. So tip number four is don't worry alone. When you are addressing and thinking about healthy family dynamics, if you have concerns for your family, you don't need to worry alone. Now, the reality is is this moment is hitting people in many different ways. We might be worried financially. We might be worried about mental health. We might be worried about our spiritual health. We might be worried even about the safety of our neighborhoods. There are many things that we have right now that we can be concerned with. The first thing that I'd like us to remember is we have an entire spiritual family to turn to. The Holy Trinity, the Mother of God, the saints our angels. And so we can bring our concerns to them and really trust that they care and that they will help guide us to the help that we need. Not worrying alone also means sharing what our concerns are with our family and our friends and with professionals and different organizations that are there to support us, that we can reach out to them. We can remember that God is just as glorified when help comes to us miraculously as when we are helped through a therapist or through a doctor or through an organization that helps us pay rent. It's to his glory that the world has these opportunities for help and healing. And so we can embrace that too. As we are working to not worry alone, we can model to our families that that suffering is a part of life and that if we have God in the middle, it can also be redemptive. As we turn to our spiritual family, we can learn about different examples of struggle where people have made it through with God's help, whether it's Bible stories or saint stories, We have a long tradition of people who have managed to find meaning and healing and holiness through difficult times. That moves us to tip number five, which is to pick up the phone. Because right now, God is calling our families to holiness. Sometimes we think that when we're in the state of crisis, that that is the hardest time to be closest to the Lord. Really, any moment... Every now is a chance. Take the time to pray together as a family. Pray about the things that you're discussing. Pray about your ship inspection. Pray about the grace that you're giving each other. Pray about not worrying alone. Bring all these things to the Lord. We have an opportunity to model Christ's love, mercy, and forgiveness to each other and to a world that really needs it. As we work to build these relationships that are healthy, that have healthy dynamics, we learn to model the love of the Holy Trinity to a fallen world. And this is really powerful. 
God is calling our families to holiness. And on a tangible level, when we work to build healthy family dynamics, we are also helping each other learn to trust and love God. The secure attachments that we learn in our families will help us have that same secure attachment to our Lord. Now that we've talked about our five tips, I have some challenges for you and for me. A little bit of a call to action. First of all, with your family, create a family timeline. Take a piece of paper, draw a line, and actually write in key events in your family's history. Moments of strength, moments of struggle. How did you get through it? You have endured previous things that God has brought you through. That will not only improve your own ability to have gratitude, it will also strengthen your attachment to the Lord that you have overcome previous things. And it will also give you a better sense of what it is that you really need to be worried about and what is really situational. That it's not normal for the wood to be creaking, but hey, there are waves hitting it. So what are we expecting? Number two, identify one resource that you need and that your family needs to be able to have the support to weather this storm. Whether that's a priest or a therapist or an employment counselor, whoever that is, identify one resource and for your sake and your family, reach out to them. The third thing that I'd like to challenge us to do is to share the love. Consider our broader family that we are a part of just by being in this world together. Serve the people in our neighborhood. Reach out to people in need. One way that we can strengthen our family is by sharing the blessings we have with others and practice those acts of service and charity. Things can be really difficult. And right now, many of us feel like we're in that storm. But I hope that with these tips and with our Lord's help, we can weather this moment and come out with a greater sense of our interconnectedness, our need to love and serve each other, and our hope in Him who fills our ship and guides us to port. So I want to thank you for spending this time with me, and may our Lord bless us and guide us and our families. Thank you.